Hi, I'm Barbara from Reading Wild Suburbia. Today I'd like to show you how I'm going to prune a very prickly plant. This is fuchsia flowering gooseberry, Ribes speciosum. It's a really very beautiful plant. It's dormant right now, not dead, so all these leaves will fall off. Uh, the reason I know it's not dead is because there are buds all over it, and I've seen it do this year after year. This time of year it just doesn't have any leaves. Um, what this plant wants to do, this is a pretty old plant, it's probably about seven or eight years old, and what this plant wants to do is it wants to just grow into this enormous sprawling uh, thicket and birds love that very much but I really would like to keep it under, under control and I've been doing that for many years um, so what what I want to do what I do every year when it goes dormant like this when it doesn't have any leaves is I'm trying to preserve these main stems the stems are you can see they're brown uh, and what it does is it shoots up canes that are covered with uh, thorns and prickles and all kinds of things and I cut those off it's a great idea to do this um, right before the thing is going to leaf out and I'm maybe a little bit late I'm seeing some some significant buds but uh, but anyway it's not a bad time of year so I've got gloves on I've got my pruner I sharpened and cleaned my pruner believe it or not and I'm all ready to go so I, all I'm going to do is go in and here's one of these canes growing way up high into here and I come down to to this uh, darker branch and make a cut all right so let me continue to go through this I want to get all of these out of here okay here's one I'm taking down right at the bottom a couple more two three four Five. Okay. Very prickly. So I've got all of these out of here. Ouch. This is a painful job. But if I were to let this thing go, then uh, over time I'd really have quite a large thicket. And it would be that much harder. I've been doing this for years. Every year I do this, I take these canes off and just leave some of the uh, bigger branches. I think on this one, I'm going to just take it, let's see. I'm going to take this piece off here. That's just a dead stem. And I think I'm going to just take this down to about here and let this fill in. I'm going to take all of them off because there won't be anything to grow. Let's see, here's one back here. This is this one I'm gonna take off down here. This separates the women from the girls, being able to cut these things without hurting yourself. Good pair of gloves is really important. Uh, just as a word, I'm using Gardena gloves. They're, um, let me get closer to the camera so you can see them. These are cheap gloves that I've gotten from Costco. Uh, and I am looking for a pair of leather gloves because leather would do a much better job in here. I'd, I'd be a lot less painful. Here's another stem that's going. And then I got a couple more down at the bottom there. And that's going to be it for this year. Now this plant, if you were to continue watering it, it would have a shorter ouch, period, dor ah, dormancy period, but I don't water it. I let it go dry, it drops all its leaves, and as soon as it cools down and the rains start to come, it, it leafs out. It has these beautiful, shiny green leaves. I'll try to get some pictures to show you. And then in about February or March, it has uh, red flowers that are tubular, and the hummingbirds love it. Um, and they're tubular, so they look a little bit like fuchsias, hence the name fuchsia flowering. Gooseberry. Gooseberry are just ribes that have thorns, 
And yes, it does have berries. I haven't eaten these berries. I don't know if they're good. All right, the plant looks pretty good. I'm gonna step back and look at it, see if there's anything else I wanna do. Always good to err on the side of doing too little than too much. You can always come back and take off another stem. What you can't do is you can't put a stem back on. I noticed that this one is broken, so I'm just gonna snip that off. Take a look around. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'll probably knock out a few more of these leaves. This isn't doing it. Question is whether I want to take that one back there. Um, it's got a little piece I'll take off. I think I'm going to take it in this much. There we go. Okay, just as a little reminder, it's a good idea to cut at the above a node. So here is a node. I'm going to bring this up to the camera. Let's see. Okay, so I'm bringing this up to the camera. And uh, when you make your cuts, oh, by the way, you can, you can see here are some of the leaves that are coming out. There's a bud right up at the top. So all the leaves will come out at these. These are the nodes. And on this particular plant coming out of the nodes, there'll be the green leaves, any new stems. And of course, these two big thorns come out. And there are prickles all along the stem. When you make a cut, let's say that this is on the plant and I wanted to cut this stem shorter. So what you want to do is you want to be right above a node. Can you see that? See, right above a node like that. You don't want to damage the node, but cut like that. And there you go. Got a nice. So here we go, all done pruning the ribes. Here it is. Um, you can see most of the canes have been removed, but it's in pretty good shape. Here, a picture of the before and after when the canes have been removed. And I will come back in the springtime when the thing really does bud out and has shiny green leaves and beautiful hanging tubular flowers that look like fuchsias and show you a picture of it then. Thank you for listening. Please check out my website, weedingwildsuburbia.com. And if you want more information on growing California native plants in your garden, have a look at my book, Wild Suburbia, Learning to Garden with Native Plants. Thanks for watching.